Topic three, the impact of discounting. When to discount liabilities. By the way, please do not fret about the long formula on your screen. You'll see that a few times. As long as you have your trusty financial calculator, you don't have to worry about this big formula. So when do we discount liabilities? We need to discount liabilities when we need to take into account the time value of money. But here's another way to think about it. What is the economic reality that you need to capture on the face of your financial statements? If you're talking about the outflow of economic resources, uh, for example, cash, in a year from now, that's going to be worth less dollars in today than when you pay out in a year or two. So we need to discount it back and then to reflect the passage of time, each year we need to increase that liability to what the outflow will be um, on the face of the financials for when the outflow actually does happen. And that passage of time, that increase in that liability through the passage of time, that's known as your interest or your financing costs. So $100 in a few years is worth less in today's dollars. That's what we record on our financial statements today. And then as we go through the year, we increase that liability, we credit the liability, and we debit the finance expense. And then we do so every year until we have the outflow of the economic resource. We debit the liability for face value. We credit our outflow of economic resources, which we have now matched because we discounted it at the beginning, and then we increased our finance or our interest expense <laughs> to the eventual outflow of economic resources. So all of that to say, when do we discount liabilities? When that outflow of economic resources isn't going to be in the current year. Another um, exception would be if there's a significant amount of uncertainty uh, around the timing or the amount of the liability. Uh, so just keep that as a caveat. But in general, if we know the amount, we know what we need to record, and it's greater than 12 months, we're going to need to discount it. One of those items that we'll need to discount that you'll see time and time again is asset retirement obligation, AROs. And under IFRS, you may hear them being referred to as decommissioning provisions. These meet the definition of a liability because they are a result of a past transaction. So they are the result of us drilling for oil or, um, or a result of us mining on the current land. Um, they, resent, they represent a present obligation because we're drilling now. Uh, and it will result in a future outflow of economic resources because we'll have to reclaim or fix up the land prior to um, prior to either disposing of it, selling it, or just putting it back to its natural habitat. This may be a contractual liability, or it may be just the very fact, um, maybe by law. So what we need to do is figure out how much in the future will the costs be to reclaim this land, to bring it back uh, to, to its original glory, and then discount it back so that it's in today's dollars. We take that amount in today's dollars and we add it to the cost of the asset. So we would debit the asset and then we would set up a separate ARO or decommissioning provision liability. And then each year we increase that liability with a corresponding offset to finance expense because we're reflecting the passage of time. Let's walk through an example. I put the inputs for your calculator on the screen. You would want to have a future value at 100,000 because we have purchased this asset for a million dollars. It was paid in cash and we purchased that on July 1st in year one. It will cost us $100,000 to remove that cell tower in 10 years. And the interest rate presently, we've used the market interest rate under IFRS, is 6%. So we need to reflect the fact that cash went out the door. So we paid in cash a million. And within this number here is the million for the cell tower. And we need to find out what is the current value of $100,000 in 10 years. So we put in 
fair value equals 100,000, or pardon me, future value equals 100,000, payment equals zero, interest rate of 6%, and N for 10 years. We would compute the present value, and that gives us 55839, which is our decommissioning obligation, our arrow liability, if this was ASPE, and we add that to the cost of the asset. All right, uh, so for those of you wondering what function for your calculator to be set in, most calculators, including the BA2+, plus, your default would be end, and that would be to reflect the fact that it's $100,000 at the end of 10 years. So something to keep in mind, we by default keep our calculator in the end mode when doing present valuing, except for when it comes to leases in a later chapter, so keep that in mind. But for now, it's at the end of 10 years. All right, time for a question. In the previous arrow example, what would the interest expense uh, recorded at the end of December 31st in year one? So let's go back. And now that we know, what would the interest expense be December 31st of year one? Our example is we bought a hundred thousand, pardon me, a one million dollar cell tower. Mm, that's on the books. What is our pertinent information? We have a 55 1,839 decommissioning obligation, and that was established on July 1st in year one. And we need to know what is the passage of time from July 1st to December 31st as far as an interest expense or a financing cost relevant to this decommissioning obligation. So before even looking at the MCQ responses, I would encourage you to pause this video and do the calculation and then see if one of your answers is a, is a response option. That's a hint for MCQs. You never wanna look for the answer and then see which one makes sense. Rather, come up with it on your own and then find it. Is your answer here? All right, if you said 1,675, that is correct. So let's take our decommissioning obligation, which we set up at the beginning, 88, pardon me, 55839, and we times that by our 6% market interest rate, but because it's from July 1st to December 31st, we times that by 50% or 6 over 12 months, which gives us $1,675, which represents the financing expense for those six months. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.